Criminal Law, Book 1, Fundamental and General Principles. What are the basic maxims in criminal law? 1. Nulum crimen nulla pena sine lege. There is no crime when there is no law punishing the same. No matter how wrongful, evil, or bad the act is, if there is no law defining the act, the same is not considered a crime. 2. Actus non facit brium nisi men citere. The act cannot be criminal where the mind is not criminal. This is true to a felony characterized by dolo, but not to a felony resulting from culpa. 3. Doctrine of pro rio. Whenever a penal law is to be construed or applied and the law admits of two interpretations, one lenient to the offender and one strict to the offender, that interpretation which is lenient or favorable to the offender will be adopted. 4. Actus me in vita factus non est mis actus. An act done by me against my will is not my act. Whenever a person is under a compulsion of irresistible force or uncontrollable fear to do an act against his will, in which that act produces a crime or offense, such person is exempted in any criminal liability arising from said act. What is the interplay between the doctrine of pro rio in Article 48, Penalty of, for Complex Crimes, of the RPC, 2010. Following the doctrine of pro rio, crimes under Article 48 of the RPC are complex and punished with single penalty that prescribed for the most serious crimes and to be imposed in its maximum period. The rationale being that the accused who commits two crimes with a single criminal impulse demonstrates lesser perversity than when the crimes are committed by different acts and several criminal resolutions. People versus Comadre. Sharshi the Fair, Volvic of Latvia, suffers from a psychotic disorder after he was almost assassinated in his previous assignment. One day, while shopping in a mall, he saw a group of shoppers whom he thought were the assassins who were out to kill him. He asked for the gun of his escort and shot ten people and wounded five other before he subdued. The wounded persons required more than 30 days for medical treatment. What crimes or crimes, if any, did he commit? 2016. Volvic committed five frustrated murders for the unwounded victims and five frustrated murders for the wounded victims. Treachery is present since a sudden attack rendered the victims defenseless. The nature of the weapon used in attacking the victims and extent of the wounds sustained by the five victims showed intent to kill. His psychotic condition is not an exempting circumstance of insanity in the absence of showing that there is a complete deprivation of intelligence in accordance with the cognition test. However, he is immune from criminal prosecution since the position of Volvic as charge de faire is diplomatic he is vested with blanket diplomatic immunity from criminal suit minuture versus ca mala inse vis a vis mala prohibita 2005 2003 2001 bar basis as their concepts mala inse there must be a criminal intent mala prohibita sufficient that the prohibited act be done. Mala inse, wrong from its very nature, generally punished under the RPC. Mala prohibita, wrongful merely because prohibited by statute, generally involves violation of special laws. Note, not all violations of special laws are mala prohibita. Even if the crime is punished under a special law, if the act punished is one which is inherently wrong, the same is malum in se, and therefore good faith and the lack of criminal intent are valid defenses unless they are the products of criminal negligence or culpa. 
Such circumstances are not appreciated unless the special law has adopted the scheme or scale of penalties under the RPC. In Malainse, mitigating and aggravating circumstances are appreciated in imposing the penalties. In Malainse, good faith, lack or cr of criminal intent, or negligence are valid defenses. In Mala Prohibita, good faith and lack of criminal intent are not valid defenses. It is enough that the prohibition was voluntarily violated. As to legal implication, Mala Inse, criminal liability is incurred when the crime is attempted or frustrated. Penalty is computed on the basis of whether he is a principal offender or merely an accomplice or accessory. In Mala Prohibita, criminal liability is generally incurred only when the crime is consummated. The penalty of the offender is the same as they are all deemed principals. Is the crime of technical malversation punished under the RPC, Mala Inse? The crime of technical malversation punished under Article 220 of the RPC was held to be a crime that is malum prohibitum. The law punishes the act of diverting public property earmarked by law or ordinance for a particular public purpose for another public purpose. The prohibited act is not inherently immoral but becomes a criminal offense because positive law forbid, forbids its commission on considerations of public policy, order, and convenience. Therefore, good faith and lack of criminal intent are not valid defenses. Isidro versus people. Is the crime of plunder mala prohibita or mala inse? It is mala inse, although punishable under special law because it is inherently evil being included among the heinous crimes punishable with reclusion perpetua to death and its constitutive crimes are mala inse, such as malversation of public funds, bribery, and monopolies and combinations. Estrada versus Sandigan Baye. Abe, married to Lisa, contracted another marriage with Connie in Singapore. Thereafter, Abe and Connie returned to the Philippines and lived as husband and wife in the hometown of Abe in Calamba. What crime, if any, can Abe be prosecuted? Abe, together with Connie, may be prosecuted for concubinage under Article 334 of the Revised Penal Code for having cohabited as husband and wife. Note, Abe may not be prosecuted for bigamy or bigamy since the bigamous marriage was contracted or solemnized in Singapore. Hence, such violation is not one of those where the Revised Penal Code under Article 2 thereof may be extraterritorially. The general rule on territoriality of criminal law governs the situation. The Philippine Consul asked his secretary to work overtime because they were finishing some important repatriation papers in the embassy. The said Consul asked his secretary to give him a cup of coffee. The consul asked the secretary to join him. When, he, when the said secretary went to the restroom, the said consul placed something in the coffee of the secretary. The secretary felt dizzy and lost consciousness. The consul then write her inside his own office. The said secretary wants to file a case against the consul. Where shall the secretary file the case? Is the said consul liable under Philippine laws? The secretary shall file the case in the Philippines. Although the crime committed, which is rape, is not in any way connected with the performance of his official function, since it was committed inside the Philippine Embassy, Philippine laws will apply. The Philippine Embassy is considered as an extension of the Philippine sovereignty. So even if the crimes committed is not in any way connected with the performance of their functions, but the crime is committed inside the Philippine Embassy, Philippine laws will still apply. Five informations charging Francisco Innocencio with acts of theft allegedly committed in conspiracy with Mi Maria Milagros Clemente were filed before the RTC. In the said informations, it was alleged that Clemente, a bank officer, fraudulently transferred a million pesos to Innocencio's bank account, and the latter later withdrew the whole amount. 
the information alleged conspiracy, but only one person is charged. Is the information valid? Yes, it is valid, but the court cannot pass verdict on the con conspirator who were not charged in the information. The non-inclusion of the co-conspirator does not invalidate the information, especially since conspiracy is not charged as a crime, but is merely alleged as a mode of committing the crime. In this case, conspiracy is alleged as a mode of committing the crime. Ideally, Clemente and Innocentio should have been indicted together. However, the non-inclusion of Clemente does not invalidate the information filed, especially since conspiracy is not charged as a crime, but is merely alleged to show how criminal liability was incurred. Innocentio versus People Three cardinal features of main characteristics of Philippine criminal law. Generality, general rule, penal laws, and those of public security and safety shall be obligatory upon all who live or sojourn in Philippine territory, subject to the principles of international law and to treaty stipulations. Article 14, Civil Code of the Philippines, 2015. Exceptions. A. Treaty stipulations and international agreements. Example, RP, U.S. Visiting Forces Accord. B. Laws of preferential application. Example, RS-75. Penalizes acts which would impair the proper observance by the Republic and its inhabitants of the immunities, rights, and privileges of duly accredited foreign diplomatic representatives in the Philippines, 2014. The principles of public international law. Letter D. Members of the Congress are not liable for libel or slander in connection with any speech delivered on the floor of the House during a regular or special sessions. 1987 Constitution, Article 4, Section 11. Number 2. Territoriality. General rule. The penal laws of the country have force and effect only within its territory. Exceptions, Article 2 of the RPC, 2000, should commit an offense while on a ship or airship. 2. Should forge or counterfeit any coin or currency note of the Philippine Islands or obligations and securities issued by the government of the Philippine Islands. 3. Should be liable for acts connected with the introduction into these islands of the obligations and securities mentioned in the preceding number. 4. While being public officers or employees should commit an offense in the exercise of their functions. Or 5. Should commit any of the crimes against national security and the law of nations. 3. Prospectivity or irretrospectivity. General rule. Acts or omissions classified as crimes will be scrutinized in accordance with the relevant penal laws if they are committed after effectivity of those penal laws. Note, lex prospicit, non respicit, means the law looks forward, never backward. Exception. Penal laws shall have a retroactive effect in so far as they favor the persons guilty of a felony. Although at the time of the publication of such laws, a final sentence has been pronounced and the convict is serving the same. RPC Article 22. Exceptions to that exception, the new law cannot be given retroactive effect even if favorable to the accused. When the new law is expressly made inapplicable to pending actions or existing causes of actions, Taver v. Valdez. When the offender is a habitual delinquent, as defined in Rule 5 in Article 62 of the RPC. Criminal Liabilities and Felonies Intentional Felony vis a vis Negligent Felony Basis as to malice Under Dolo, act is malicious. Under culpa, not malicious. As to intent, under Dolo, with deliberate intent. Under culpa, Injury caused is unintentional, it being an incident of another act performed without malice. 
as to the source of the wrong committed and their dolo has intention to cause a wrong and their culpa wrongful act results from imprudence negligence lack of foresight or lack of skill requisites of dolo criminal intent the purpose to use a particular means to effect such result intent to commit an act with malice being purely a mental process is presumed from the proof of commission of an unlawful act a mental state hence its existence is shown by overt acts note if there is no criminal intent the act is justified offender incurs no criminal liability number two freedom of action the voluntariness on the part of the person to commit the act or omission note if there is lack of freedom the offender is exempt from liability number three intelligence means the capacity to know and understand the consequences and morality of human acts note if there is lack of intelligence the offender is exempt from liability note if any of the following requisites is absent there is no dolo requisites of culpa one criminal negligence on the part of the offender that is the crime was the result of negligence reckless imprudence lack of foresight or lack of skill 2 freedom of action on the part of the offender that is he was not acting under duress and 3 intelligence on the part of the offender in performing the negligent act when are light felonies punishable light felonies are punishable only when consummated with the exception of those committed against persons or property three situations wherein a person becomes criminally liable for the resulting felony although different from that which he intended what are the causes which may produce a result different from that which the offender intended one mistake in identity error in personae the offender intends the injury on one person but the harm fell on another in this situation the intended victim was not at the scene of the crime example a wanting to kill b killed c instead 2015 note there are only two persons involved the actual but it unintended victim and the offender number two mistake in blow a berasho ictus a person directed the blow at an intended victim but because of poor aim the blow landed on someone else in aberratio ictus, the intended victim and the actual victim are both at the scene of the crime. Example, A shot at B, but because of lack of precision, hit C instead. 2015 Note, there are three persons involved. The offender, the intended victim, and the actual victim. 3. Injurious consequences are greater than that intended. Praetor intentionem. The injury is on the intended victim, but the resulting consequence is so grave a wrong than what was intended. It is essential that there is a notable disparity between the means employed or the act of the offender and the felony which resulted. This means that the resulting felony cannot be foreseen from the acts of the offender. A. Without intent to kill, struck at the victim on the back, causing the victim to fall down and hit his head on the pavement. Example, if A slapped his wife who fell on the ground, her head hitting the hard pavement, rendering her unconscious and thereafter died, A is liable for parricide when he slapped his wife. A was committing a felony. His wrongful intent is only to cause injury, but the wrongful act done was greater, the killing of the spouse. Sandoval, 2016. General Rule, Praetor intentionum, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced, is a mitigating circumstance, particularly covered by paragraph 3 of Article 13. Exception, any person charged under Section 4 of the Anti-Hazing Law, RA 8049, shall not be entitled to the mitigating circumstance that there was no intention to commit so grave a wrong. The three enumerated situations are always the result of an intentional felony or dolo. These situations do not arise out of a criminal negligence.
Bunimer committed robbery inside a passenger FX by threatening to shoot the passengers if they do not give their wallets and cell phones. Bunimer was successful in taking the things of the passengers. One of the passengers, Tan, chased Bunimer, who boarded a passenger jeepney in order to escape. Bunimer boxed Tan when he held on the handle bar of the jeepney, causing him to lose his grip and fall from the jeepney, and thereafter was run over by the rear tire of said jeepney and died. Bunamer contends that he should be given the mitigating circumstance of lack of intent to, con to commit so grave a wrong. Is Bunamer entitled to the mi mitigating circumstance? No. This mitigating circumstance addresses itself to the intention of the offender at the particular moment when the offender executes or commits the criminal act. This mitigating circumstance is obtaining when there is a notable disparity between the means employed by the accused to commit a wrong and the resulting crime committed. The intention of the accused at the time of the commission of the crime is manifested from the weapon used, the mode of attack employed, and the injury sustained by the victim. People versus Brunomer. What is proximate cause? Proximate cause has been defined as that cause which, in natural and continuous sequence, unbroken by any efficient intervening cause, produces the injury, and without which the result would not have occurred. People versus Villacorda. As a rule, the offender is criminally liable for, for all the consequences of his felonious act, although not intended if the felonious act is the proximate cause of the felony. What are the prerequisites of proximate cause? 1. The direct, natural, and logical cause. 2. Produces the injury or damage. 3. Unbroken by any efficient intervening cause. And 4. Without which the result would not have occurred. Luis Cruz went to the LRT station. He boarded one of the coaches bound for Baclaran. While seated, he happened to read a newspaper left on the seat and noticed that the headlines were about the sinking of the super ferry while on its way to Cebu. He went over the list of missing passengers who were presumed dead and came across the name of his grandfather who had raised him from childhood after he was orphaned. He was shocked and his mind went blank for a few minutes, after which he ran amok, and using his palaiso started stabbing at the passengers who then scampered away with three of them jumping out of the train and landing on the road below. All the three passengers died later of their injuries at the hospital. Is Luis liable for the death of the three passengers who jumped out of the moving train? State your reasons. Yes, Luis is liable for their death because he was committing a felony when he started stabbing at the passengers and such wrongful acts was the proximate cause of said passengers jumping out of the train. Hence their death, under Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code, any person committing a felony shall incur criminal liability, although the wrongful act done be different from what which he intended. In this case, the death of the three passengers was the direct, natural, and logical consequence of Louis felonious act which created an immediate sense of danger in the minds of said passengers who try to avoid or escape from it by jumping out of the train. People versus ARPA Impossible Crime What is an impossible crime? Can there be an impossible crime of adultery? 2015 An impossible crime is an act which would be an offense against persons or property were it not for the inherent impossibility of its accomplishment or on account of the employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. There is no impossible crime of adultery since this is a crime against justity and not against person or property as required by Article 4, Paragraph 2 of the RPC. Charlie hated his classmate Brad because the latter was assiduously courting legally Charlie's girlfriend. Charlie went to a veterinarian and asked for some poison on the pretext that it would be used to kill a very sick old dog. Actually, Charlie intended to use the poison on Brad. The veterinarian mistakenly gave Charlie a non-toxic powder, 
which when mixed with Brad's food did not kill Brad. Did Charlie commit any crime? If so, what and wh why? If not, why not? Charlie committed an impossible crime of murder. His act of mixing the non-toxic powder with Brad's food done with intent to kill would have constituted murder, which is a crime against person had it not been for the employment of a means which, unknown to him, is ineffectual. Carla, four years old, was kidnapped by Enrique, the tricycle driver paid by her parents to bring and fetch her to and from school. Enrique wrote a ransom note demanding 500000 from Carla's parents in exchange for Carla's freedom. Enrique sent the ransom note by mail. However, before the ransom note was received by Carla's parents, Enrique's hideout was discovered by the police. Carla was rescued while Enrique was arrested and incarcerated. Considering that the ransom note was not received by Carla's parents, the investigating prosecutor merely filed a case of impossible crime to commit kidnapping against Enrique. Is the prosecutor correct? If he is not correct, can he instead file a case of grave coercion? The crime committed by Enrique is kidnapping for ransom, even before the ransom note was received. The crime of kidnapping with serious illegal detention had already been committed. The act cannot be considered an impossible crime because there was no inherent improbability of its accomplishment or the employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. The delivery of the ransom note after the rescue of the victim did not extinguish the offense, which had already been consummated when Enrique deprived Carla of her liberty. The sending of the ransom note would have had the effect only of increasing the penalty to death under the last paragraph of Article 267. Furthermore, kidnapping is a crime against liberty. In an impossible crime, it is important that the accused committed an act that would have been a crime against person or property. The prosecutor cannot file a case of grave coercion. Instead, as discussed above, the crime committed by Enrique is kidnapping for ransom. Stages of Execution A felony is consummated when all the elements necessary for its execution and accomplishment are present. It is frustrated when the offender performs all the acts of execution which would produce the felony as a consequence but which nevertheless do not produce it by reason of causes independent of the will of the perpetrator. It is attempted when the offender commences the commission of the felony directly by overt acts and does not perform all the acts of execution which should produce the felony by reason of some cause or accident other than his own spontaneous desistance. Valenzuela versus Gutierrez Jefferson was simply fetching water when Kevin suddenly hit him on the nape of his neck. Jefferson complained about this to his landlady, Kevin's sister, but the latter simply told him to forgive his brother. Two hours later, when he resumed fetching water, Kevin suddenly stabbed Jefferson on the left part of his face and chest. He was found bleeding by his son-in-law and was rushed to the hospital. According to the medical report submitted, the chest wound he sustained was fatal and could have caused Jefferson's death were it for the timely medical intervention. What crime is committed by Kevin? Kevin is liable for frustrated homicide. The essential element in frustrated or attempted homicide is the intent of the offender to kill the victim immediately before or simultaneously with the infliction of injuries. Intent to kill being a state of mind as discerned by the courts only through external manifestations. In this case, Kevin wielded and used a knife in assaulting Jefferson. There is also no doubt that the wound on Jefferson's chest would have been sufficient to result to his death if it were not for the timely medical intervention. Complex crime and composite crimes. What is the effect of a compound crime in the criminal liability of the offender? The penalty for the most serious crime in its maximum period shall be imposed. While Antonu was outside the kitchen of their house and Martin in the yard, Alejandro was spotted near the vicinity of their house. Suddenly, Alejandro threw a grenade towards the cemented part of the yard. The grenade exploded and Antonu was heard 
in his pelvic area while Martin, his father, was fatally hit with shrapnel, causing his death. What is the criminal liability of Alejandro? Alejandro is liable for murder with frustrated murder. The act of Alejandro in throwing a grenade to Martin and Antonio is a single act, which resulted to the death of Martin and the injuries of Antonio. This single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies, which are murder and frustrated murder. Hence, the crime should be complex and the penalty of the most serious crime in its maximum period should be imposed. People resist to lie. Mayor Tawan Tawan, together with his security court, went home to Salvador, Lanao del Norte, on board a yellow pickup service vehicle. At around 3 p.m. of the same day, Nelmida, together with his other co-accused, surreptitiously waited for the vehicle of the group of Mayor Tawan Tawan. The moment the yellow pickup service vehicle passed by the aforesaid waiting shed, Nelmida and their co-accused opened, the opened fire and rained bullets on the vehicle using high-powered power firearms, killing two security escorts while injuring others. Nelmida and his co-accused were charged with double murder with multiple frustrated murder and double attempted murder. Arnold Mida and his co-accused guilty of the said complex crime? No, the killing and wounding of the victims were not the result of a single discharge of firearms by Nelmida and his co-accused. To note, Nelmida and his co-accused opened fire and rained bullets on the vehicle boarded by Mayor Tawan Tawan and his group. As a result, two security escorts died while five of them were wounded and injured. The victims sustained gunshot wounds in different parts of their bodies. Therefrom, it cannot be gainsaid that more than one bullet had hit the victims. Moreover, more than one gunman fired at the vehicle of the victims, as held in People vs. Valdez. Each act by each gunman pulling the trigger of their respective firearms, aiming each particular moment at different persons, constitute distinct and individual acts which cannot give rise to a complex crime, People vs. Nalmida. A group of Navy personnel went to a canteen to have some drinks. At around 10 o'clock in the evening, they transferred to a video K bar, Aquarius, where they continued their drinking session. Shortly thereafter, a heated argument ensued between Bacosa and Punsalan. To avoid further trouble, the other Navy personnel tried to pacify the two and decided to leave Aquarius and return to their camp. Soon after the Navy personnel passed the sentry gate, a maroon Nissan van was rushing and zigzagging the road towards the group of Navy personnel. Punsalan was recognized as the driver. The van sped away towards the camp and suddenly swerved to the right, hitting the ground of the walking Navy personnel. Two of the Navy personnel were dead, while the others sustained serious injuries in their body. What is the criminal liability of Punsalan? Punsalan is guilty of the complex crime of murder with attempted murder, when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies. The penalty for the most serious crime shall be imposed. The same to be applied in its maximum period. Punsalan was animated by a single purpose to kill the Navy personnel, and committed a single act of stepping on the accelerator swerving to the right side of the road and ramming through the Navy personnel. The crimes of murder and attempted murder are both grave felonies as the law attaches an afflictive penalty to capital punishment, reclusion perpetua to death for murder, while attempted murder is punished by prison mayor, an afflictive penalty, people versus Punsalan. Special complex crime vis-a-vis -vis complex crime. Special complex crime. It is the law which specifies for the crimes that should be combined. The law provides for a single penalty. A light felony committed in the commission of the crime is absorbed. Complex crime. The law merely states two or more grave or less grave felonies or an offense is necessary to commit the other. The penalty to be imposed will be the most serious crime in its maximum period. A light felony committed would constitute a separate and distinct charge. Conspiracy and Proposal Conspiracy Conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it. Requisites of Conspiracy 
One, two or more persons came to an agreement. Number two, agreement concerned the commission of a crime. And three, execution of a felony was decided upon. Two kinds of conspiracy. One, conspiracy as a crime. Mere conspiracy is the crime itself. This is only true when the law expressly punishes mere conspiracy. Otherwise, the conspiracy does not bring about the commission of the crime, because conspiracy is not an overt act, but a mere preparatory act. Examples Conspiracy to commit treason Conspiracy to commit rebellion Conspiracy to commit acts like sale, importation and distribution of drugs Conspiracy to commit access device fraud Conspiracy to commit terrorism Number 2. Conspiracy as a basis of incurring criminal liability When the conspiracy is only a basis of incurring criminal liability, there must be an overt act done before the co-conspirators become criminally liable. General rule. As long as he appeared in the scene of the crime, he is liable as a co-conspirator. Exceptions. 1. If he is a mastermind, he does not have to be in the scene of the crime to be co-conspirator. Number 2. If he performs an overt act in the performance of the conspiracy, even if it is not in the scene of the crime per se, like the driver of a getaway car who planned the crime as well, or the man who pressed the button of a remote control bomb and the bomb exploded a few streets away. Differentiate Will Conspiracy and Chain Conspiracy, 2016 Bar. A will conspiracy occurs when there is a single person or group, the hub, dealing individually with two or more other persons or groups, the spokes. The spoke typically interacts with the hub rather than with another spoke. In the event that the spoke shares a common purpose to succeed, there is a single conspiracy. However, in instances when each spoke is unconcerned with the success of the other spokes, there are multiple conspiracies. A chain conspiracy, on the other hand, exists when there is a successive communication and cooperation in the same way as with legitimate business operations between manufacturer and wholesaler then wholesaler and retailer, and then retailer and consumer, Estrada vs. Sandy Gambaya. One night, after escorting his guests outside the house, Alan noticed that garbage was placed in front of his house. Alan, addressing nobody in particular, complained of the garbage. Jeff and Kevin, thinking that Alan was addressing his complaint to them, were angered and started throwing stones at him. Alan rushed inside his house to wash his bloody face and to arm himself with a piece of wood. However, before he was able to retaliate, he was hit by a shovel by Joriamon. Joseph and Jose held Alan, rendering him helpless, while Jeff and Kevin stabbed him in the abdomen with a knife. Alan lost consciousness and was confined in the hospital for nine days. Assuming that they were convicted for frustrated murder, what is the extent of the criminal liability of Jeff, Kevin, Jerry Mon, Jose, and Joseph? They're all liable as co-conspirators. Conspiracy presupposes unity of purpose and unity of action towards the realization of an unlawful objective among the accused. Its existence can be inferred from the individual acts of the accused which, if taken as a whole, are in fact related and indicative of a concurrence of sentiment. The chain of events leading to the commission of the crime adequately established a conspiracy among them. Jeff and Kevin delivered the initial attack on Allen by stoning him. Afterwards, Jorimon struck him with a shovel. And finally, Joseph and Jose held him so that the others can stab Allen. Ibanez et al. versus People, 2016. A Starix van driven by Mayor Mitra and an ambulance driven by Morilla were caught by the police in a checkpoint with a sack of shabu inside of two vehicles. The Starix van, which was ahead of the ambulance, was able to pass the checkpoint set by the police officers. However, the ambulance driven by Morilla was stopped by police officers and further examination revealed that the sack inside the van contained shabu. Morilla told the police officers 
that he was with Mayor Mitra in an attempt to persuade them to let him pass. This discovery prompted the operatives to chase the Stark van of Mayor Mitra, in which sacks containing Shabu was also discovered. Is there a conspiracy established between Morila and Mayor Mitra? Yes, there is conspiracy. In conspiracy, it need not be shown that the parties actually came together and agreed in express terms to enter into and pursue a crime, which usually inferred from proof of facts and circumstances which, taken together, indicate that they are parts of some complete whole. In this case, the totality of the factual circumstances lead to a conclusion that Morila conspired with Mayor Mitra in a common desire to transport the dangerous drugs, people versus Morila. How is conspiracy proven? Jurisprudence requires that conspiracy must be proven as a crime itself. Conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a crime and decide to commit it. Proof of the agreement need not rest on direct evidence, as the same may be inferred from the conduct of the parties indicating a common understanding among them. With respect to the commission of the offense, it is not necessary to show that two or more persons met together and entered into an explicit agreement setting out the details of an unlawful scheme or the details by which an illegal objective is to be carried out. The rule is that conviction is proper upon proof that the accused acted in concert, each of them doing his part to fulfill the common design to kill the victim. People vs. Bilalva CA, YB, and CC planned to rob Miss Odie. They entered her house by breaking one of the windows in her house after taking her personal properties, and as they were about to leave, XA decided to on impasse to rape Odie. As XA was molesting her, YB and CC stood outside the door of her bedroom and did nothing to prevent XA from raping Odie. What crime or crimes did XA, YB, and CC commit, and what is the criminal liability of each? The crime committed by XA, YB, and CC is a composite crime of robbery with rape, a single indivisible offense under Article 294 of the RPC. Although the conspiracy among the offenders was only to commit robbery and only XA raped CD, I mean OD, the other robbers, YB and CC, were present and aware of the rape being committed by their co-conspirator. Having done nothing to stop XA from committing the rape, YB and CC thereby concurred in the commission of the rape by their co-conspirator. The criminal liability of XA, YC, and CC shall be the same. They are principals in the special complex crime of robbery with rape, which is a single indivisible offense, where the rape accompanying the robbery is just a component. Legal Effects of Implied Conspiracy 1. Not all those who are present at the scene will be considered as conspirators. 2. Only those who participated by criminal acts in the commission of the crime will be considered as co-conspirators and 3. Mere acquiescence to or approval of the commission of the crime without any act of criminal participation shall not render one criminally liable as co-conspirator. Circumstances affecting criminal liability. Pedro is married to Tessie. Juan is the first cousin of Tessie. While in the market, Pedro saw a man stabbing Juan. Seeing the attack on Juan, Pedro picked up a spade nearby and hit the attacker on his head, which caused the latter's death. Can Pedro be absolved of, of the killing? on the ground that it is in defense of a relative, explained 2016. No, the relatives of the accused for purpose of defense of relative under Article 11 of the RPC are his spouse, ascendants, descendants, or legitimate, natural, or adopted brothers or sisters, or of his relatives by affinity in the same degrees, and those by consanguinity within the fourth civil degree relative by affinity within the same degree includes the ascendant, descendant, brother or sister of the spouse of the accused. In this case, one is not the ascendant, descendant, brother or sister of Tessie, the spouse of Pedro. Relative by consanguinity within the fourth civil degree includes first cousin, but in this case, one is the cousin of Pedro by affinity, but not by consanguinity. 
Juan, therefore, is not a relative of Pedro for purpose of applying the provision in defense of relative. May the justifying circumstance of self-defense be invoked at the same time with the exempting circumstance of accident? No. Self-defense is inconsistent with the exempting circumstance of accident, in which there is no intent to kill. On the other hand, self-defense necessarily contemplates a premeditated intent to kill in order to defend oneself from imminent danger. Pomoy versus People. In Toledo versus People, the Supreme Court held that there is no such defense as accident self-defense or accidental self-defense in the realm of criminal law. Self-defense under Article 11, Paragraph 1 of the Revised Penal Code necessarily implies a deliberate and positive overt act of the accused to prevent or repel an unlawful aggression of another with the use of reasonable means. The accused has freedom of action. He is aware of the consequences of his deliberate acts. The defense is based on necessity, which is the supreme and irresistible master of men, of all human affairs, and of the law. From necessity, and limited by it, proceeds the right of self-defense. The right begins when necessity does, and ends when it ends. Toledo versus People. Dion and Talia were spouses. Dion always came home drunk since he lost his job a couple of months ago. Talia had gotten used to the verbal abuse from Dion. One night, in addition to the usual verbal abuse, Dion beat up Talia. The next morning, Dion saw the injury that he had inflicted upon Talia and promised her that he would stop drinking and never beat her again. However, Dion did not make good on his promise. Just after one week, he started drinking again. Talia once more endured the usual verbal abuse, afraid that he might beat her up again. Talia stabbed Dion with a kitchen knife while he was passed out from imbibing too much alcohol. Talia was charged with the crime of parricide, 2015. May Talia invoke the defense of battered woman syndrome to free herself from criminal liability? No. A single act of battery or physical harm committed by Dion against Talia resulting to the physical and psychological or emotional distress on her part is not sufficient to avail of the benefit of the justifying circumstance of battered woman syndrome. The defense of battered woman syndrome can be invoked if the woman with a marital relationship with a victim is subjected to cumulative abuse or battery involving the infliction of physical harm resulting to physical and psychological or emotional distress. Cumulative means resulting from successive addition. In some, there must be at least two battering episodes between the accused and her intimate partner, and such final episode produced in the battered person's mind an actual fear of an imminent harm from her batterer and an honest belief that she needed to use force in order to save her life. People versus Genosa Will your answer be the same, assuming that Talia killed Dion after being beaten up a second time? Explain. No, Talia can now invoke the defense of battered woman syndrome to free herself from criminal liability for killing her husband. Since she suffered physical and emotional distress arising from cumulative abuse or battery, under Section 26 of RA 9262, victim survivors of battered woman syndrome do not incur any criminal or civil liability despite the absence of the requisites of self-defense. Rog Rogelio de las Reyes, along with Roderick Licayan and Roberto Lara, were charged with the crime of kidnapping for ransom. In his defense, de los Reyes argued that he was merely passing by at the crime scene when one of the co-accused pointed a gun at him and forced him to guard the victims. Hence, he is entitled to the exempting circumstance of compulsion due to irresistible force. Is the exempting circumstance of compulsion due to irresistible force present? No. A person invoking the exempting circumstance of compulsion due to irresistible force admits in effect the commission of a punishable act and must therefore prove the exempting circumstance by clear and convincing evidence. Specifically, he must show that the irresistible force reduced him to a mere instrument that acted not only without will but also against his will. The compulsion must be of such character as to leave the accused no opportunity to defend himself or to escape. 
the duress, force, fear, or intimidation must be present, imminent, and impending, and it must be of such nature as to induce a well-grounded apprehension of death or serious bodily harm if the act is not done. It is hard to believe that a person who accidentally discovers kidnapped victims would be held at gunpoint by the kidnappers to guard his said victims. People versus Likayan Y, while alighting from his vehicle, was hit by X with his car. This caused Y to be thrown four meters away from his jeepney. X was charged with frustrated murder and convicted in the RTC of frustrated homicide. Upon appeal in the CA, the crime was modified to reckless imprudence resulting in physical injuries. X contends that the CA should have appreciated voluntary surrender as a mitigating circumstance in his favor. Is X contention correct? No. The mitigating circumstance of voluntary surrender cannot be appreciated in his favor. Paragraph 5 of Article 365 Revised Penal Code expressed states that in the imposition of the penalties, the courts shall exercise their sound discretion without regard to the rules prescribed in Article 64 of the Revised Penal Code, Mariano v. People. May this regard of age and sex be appreciated in robbery with homicide, which is a crime against property? No. With respect to disregard of age and sex, the same may be appreciated only in crimes against persons or honor. It is not correct to consider this aggravating circumstance in crimes against property. Besides, robbery with homicide is principally a crime against property and not against persons. Homicide is a mere incident of the robbery, the latter being the main purpose an object of the criminal. People versus Hernandez. X, while descending from a curved path, collided with a motorcycle, thereby killing Y, one of its passengers, and causing serious physical injuries to the two other victims. The body of Y was loaded into the vehicle of X, but the latter's engine would not start. Thus, the body was loaded in a different vehicle. The jack of X was used to extricate the body of Y from being pinned under the vehicle of X. X in his defense claimed that it was not his fault that the tricycle swerved in his direction. X was charged with reckless imprudence, resulting to homicide with double serious physical injuries and damage to property under Article 365 in relation to Article 263 of the RPC. With the aggravating circumstance that accused failed to land on the spot, to the injured party such help that was in his hands to give. Should the court appreciate the alleged aggravating circumstance? No. The aggravating circumstance, the accused failed to lend on the spot to the injured party such help that was in his hands to give should not be appreciated. Verily, it is the inexcusable lack of precaution of the conscious indifference to the consequences of the conduct which applies the criminal intent in Article 365. The limiting element in the last paragraph of Article 365 of the RPC, which imposes the penalty next higher in degree upon the offender who fails to lend on the spot to the injured parties such help as may be in his hands to give, according to case law, a. is dependent on the means in the hands of the offender. Example, the type and degree of assistance that he or she at a time and place of the incident is capable of giving, and B, requires adequate proof. X was able to supply the help according to the extent of his capabilities. Gonzaga versus People Roger, the leader of a crime syndicate in Malate, Manila, demanded a payment of Antonio, the owner of a motel in that area, of 10000 a month as protection money. With the monthly payments, Roger assured that the syndicate would provide protection to Antonio his business, and his employees. Should Antonio refuse, Roger warned that the motel owner would either be killed or his establishment would be destroyed. Antonio refused to pay the protection money. Days later, at around 3 in the morning, Mauro, Mauro a member of the criminal syndicate, arrived at Antonio's home and hurled a grenade into an open window of the bedroom where Antonio his wife and their three-year-old daughter were sleeping. All three of them were killed instantly when the grenade exploded. State with reasons the crime or crimes that had been committed as well as the aggravating circumstances, if any, attended thereto. 2008 
by demanding protection money under threat and intimidation that the businessman Antonio would be killed or his establishment destroyed if he would refuse to pay the protection money, the crime of grave threat is committed by Roger, the leader of the crime syndicate. For killing the businessman, his wife and three-year-old daughter, the complex crime of multiple murder was committed by Mauro, a member of the same crime syndicate. The killing is qualified by the use of an explosive hand grenade. The treachery attending the killing shall be separately appreciated as another aggravating circumstance aside from the use of explosive as the Kalaifa Ying circumstance. Other aggravating circumstances which may be appreciated are dwelling because the killing were committed in home of the victims who had not given any provocation. Number two, nocturnity considering that the offenders carried out the killing at around 3 a.m. indicative of a deliberate choice of night time for the commission of the crime. 3. Treachery under Article 14, par Paragraph 16, mentioned above, considering that victims were all asleep when killed. And 4. The offense was committed by a person who belongs to an organized syndicated crime group. Should the aggravating circumstance of dwelling be considered if the assailant was outside the house and the victim was inside? The aggravating circumstance of dwelling should be taken into account. Although the trigger man fired the shot from outside house, his victim was inside. For this circumstance to be considered, it is not necessary that the accused should have actually entered the dwelling of the victim to commit the offense. It is enough that the victim was attacked inside his own house, although the assailant may have devised means to perpetrate the assault. People versus Sibu. Is abuse of superior strength present as an aggravating circumstance when it is shown that two accused attack a lone victim? No. Abuse of superior strength is present whenever there is a notorious inequality of forces between the victim and the aggressor. Assuming a situation of superiority of strength notoriously advantageous for the aggressor, selected or taken advantage of by him in the commission of the crime, the fact that there were two persons who attacked the victim does not per se establish that the crime was committed with abuse of superior strength, there being no proof of the relative strength of the aggressors and the victim. The evidence must establish that the assailants purposely sought the advantage or that they had the deliberate intent to use this advantage. To take advantage of superior strength means to purposely use excessive force out of proportion to the means of defense available to the person attacked. The appreciation of this aggravating circumstance depends on the age, size, and strength of the parties. Fantastico versus Malikse. For treachery to be appreciated, is it enough to show that the attack against the intended victim was unexpected? No. The unexpectedness of an attack cannot be the sole basis of a finding of treachery, even if the attack was intended to kill another, as long as the victim's position was merely accidental. Treachery as a qualifying circumstance must be deliberately sought to ensure the safety of the accused from the defensive acts of the victim. A finding of the existence of treachery should be based on clear and convincing evidence. Such evidence must be as conclusive as the fact of killing itself. In this case, no evidence was presented to show that petitioner consciously adopted or reflected on the means, method, or form of attack to secure his unfair advantage. Cicero versus People. What are special aggravating circumstances? Special aggravating circumstances are those which arise under special conditions to increase the penalty for the offense to its maximum period, but the same cannot increase the penalty to the next higher degree. They must always be alleged and charged in the information and must be proven during the trial in order to be appreciated. Moreover, it cannot be offset by an ordinary mitigating circumstance. People versus De Leon. Example 1. Quasi recidivism, Article 160. Number 2. Robbery by band, Article 295. 3. Robbery in an inhibited place, Article 300. 4. Commission of a crime by a syndicate. 5. Taking advantage of public position. 6. Complex crimes under Article 48. 7. Use of a loose firearm when inherent in the commission of a crime punishable under the RPC or other special laws. 
example, homicide, murder. 8. Use of dangerous drugs in the commission of a crime. Note, while Section 25 RA 9165 expressly provides that it is a qualifying aggravating circumstance, it will not be controlling because of the use of dangerous drugs in the commission of the crime does not change the nature of the crime committed. Hence, it is only a special aggravating circumstance. Campanilla, 2017. What are the other two circumstances found in the RPC affecting criminal liability? 1. Absolutory cause has the effect of an exempting circumstance, and it is predicated on lack of voluntariness, such as instigation. Example, in case of instigation and in case of a relative of a principal is charged as an accessory, he is exempt from criminal liability. Extenuating circumstances has the effect of mitigating the criminal liability of the offender. Example, in case of infanticide, concealment of dishonor is an extenuating circumstance and so far as the pregnant woman and the maternal grandparents are concerned. Abortion under Article 258 would also mitigate the liability of the pregnant woman if the purpose is to conceal dishonor, but such is not available to the parents of the pregnant woman. Also, in Article 333, if the person guilty of adultery committed the offense while being abandoned without justification, the penalty next lower in degree shall be imposed. Entrapment vis-a-vis -vis instigation. Basis as to intent entrapment. The criminal design originates from and is already in the mind of the lawbreaker even before entrapment. Instigation. The idea and design to bring about the commission of the crime originated and developed in the mind of the law enforcers. Means and ways. Under entrapment, the law enforcers resort to ways and means for the purpose of capturing the lawbreaker in flagrante delicto. Under instigation, the law enforcers induce, lure, or incite a person who is not minded to commit a crime and would not otherwise commit it into committing the crime. As to criminal liability under entrapment, the circumstance is no bar to prosecution and conviction of the law breaker. Under instigation, this circumstance absolves the accused from criminal liability. People versus Dante Marcos. Persons criminally liable. What are the kinds of principles? 1. Principle by direct participation. 2. Principle by induction or inducement. 3. Principle by indispensable cooperation. A asked B to kill C because of a grave injustice done to A by C. A promised B a reward. B was willing to kill C, not so much because of the reward promised to him, but because he also had his own long-standing grudge against C, who had wronged him in the past. If C killed B, would A be liable as a principal by inducement? No. A would not be liable as a principal by inducement because the reward he promised B is not the sole impelling reason which made B to kill C. To bring about criminal liability of a core principal, the inducement made by the inducer must be the sole consideration which caused the person induced to commit the crime and without which the crime would not have been committed. The facts of the case indicate that B, the killer, supposedly induced by A, had his own reason to kill C, out of a long-standing grudge. Lai Lai convinced AAA to accompany her as a wake at Paranaque City. Before proceeding to the wake, Lai Lai and AAA went to Bulungan Fish Port along the coastal road to ask for some fish. When they reached the fish port, they proceeded to Akabuhan. Lele, Lai Lai suddenly pulled AAA inside a room where a man known by the name Speed was waiting. AAA saw Speed give money to Lai Lai and heard Speed tell Lai Lai to look for a younger girl. Thereafter, Speed wielded a knife, tied AAA's hands, and raped her. Is Lai Lai guilty for the crime of rape as principal by indispensable cooperation? No. Lai Lai is not a principal by indispensable cooperation. To be a principal by indispensable cooperation, one must participate in the criminal resolution, a conspiracy or unity in criminal purpose, and cooperation in the commission of the offense.
by performing another act without which it would not have been accomplished. The act of Lailai in convincing AAA to go with her until Lailai received money from Speed, who raped AAA, are not indispensable in the crime of rape. Anyone could have accompanied AAA and offered the latter services in exchange for money, and AAA could still have been raped. People versus July.